Once you have Audacity installed and open, you should be seeing a screen that looks like this. Let's first get familiar with the tools at the top. Keep in mind that your configuration may not look like mine because all of these tools can be undocked and moved around. So if your configuration is different, pause this video if needed and find the tool set being demonstrated. Usually in the top left are the player controls. Record, stop, play, pause, skip to start, and skip to end. In the next set, be sure the iron bar is selected. The iron bar serves more or less as your cursor, or sometimes called playhead. During recording and playback, keep an eye on these meters. One is for input, the one with the microphone, and the other is for playback, the one with the speaker. Note the vertical bar over zero. Do not go past that bar or clipping will occur. That bar is at the 0.0, .0 decibel mark. 0, 0.0 decibels is the highest level for digital audio. Keep your audio levels to the left of that mark. If you need to stretch out the meters for a better view, you can. Now let's enter our personal settings. The slider for the playback and the microphone should be set about in the middle to begin. You can adjust them when doing a mic check before the actual recording. Please remember to do this mic check before recording. Underneath the sliders on this configuration are some drop-down menus. First, MME Multimedia Extensions is the default and offers compatibility with the most number of computers. Windows Direct Sound is more recent and offers potentially less latency, the time between when you speak and when it is recorded. If you're unsure of which one to select, do a test and see which one sounds better. If you can't hear a difference, then you have your answer. Next, Select how you want to listen to your playback, your speakers in other words. It's recommended that you listen back through a good pair of audio headphones. Then, in the microphone drop-down menu, you should see your mic, if you have it plugged in and turned on. If you don't see the mic you want to use, close Audacity and make sure your mic is plugged in and then relaunch Audacity. The transcription toolbar lets you replay a selection at a slower or faster speed as you listen for something particular. Leave it at its default of 1. Lastly on this row, you select whether you want to record in mono or stereo. And you want stereo, of course. In the bottom left window is a very important setting, Project Rate in Hertz HZ. The default should be 44100. If it isn't, go to Edit, Preferences, select Quality in the left-hand menu, and then set the default sample rate to 44100 Hz and the default sample format to 16-bit. OK, we should be ready to record. Remember that being ready to record means that you have conducted a microphone check your input levels are not too high or too low. Your microphone is positioned correctly to avoid overpowering the mic with plosives or sibilants. Okay, with our settings in place, we should now be ready to record. The first thing we're going to do is to click on the big red record button and then wait for three seconds as we record the ambient noise in the room. Let's get started. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation Machine. Its URL is citationmachine.net. It is the first and most widely used Citation Machine on the Internet. Here's how to use it for APA citations. Step 1. In the Choose Your Style section, 
select APA. OK, now that we have our selection recorded, about 30 seconds, let's go ahead and use the Zoom Out tool to bring it on down so that we can get the entire clip on our screen. And that looks pretty good. The second thing we're going to do is to take a look, really close look, by zooming in of this opening section here. And as you can see, there are little dots and squiggles and whatnot on it indicating the presence of noise. And if we play it back, we might be able to hear some of that noise. A little of this and a little of that. Now, to get rid of the little of this and little of that, with that section highlighted, we go to Effect and Noise Removal. And the first thing we do is to Get Noise Profile. Now that we have the noise profile, we select the entire clip. We can go Control A, or we can zoom out and use our playhead to select the whole thing. Once we have the entire clip selected, we go back to Effect, back to Noise Removal, and this time we're going to preview what it's going to sound like without the noise. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation. Okay, sounds good. I definitely got a pop on the shine there that I'm going to have to take care of. But we will go ahead and take out the noise by clicking OK. Now, if we zoom back in, you'll see that the once line that had the little pops on it now lo no longer has anything on it, and that is indicating silence. So let's go ahead and cut that off. We're finished with it. We don't need it anymore. It served our purposes. OK, the next thing we want to do is to apply normalization. Now, normalization simply means that you apply a constant amount of gain in order to bring up the peak to a target level. So you bring it up as high as you can. For example, this is a peak right here. Probably a mistake on my part. Let's see what that peak consists of. It's a, it's a good peak. In other words, it's not a goof. It's not a bad sound. It's a normal peak. And so we're going to bring the whole thing up to a target level. So let's select the whole clip. We go to Effect. We go to Normalize. And you notice that I have my normalization set at minus 2.0. If you uh, want to get a little bit louder, you can go to negative 1.0. Taking it all the way to the max, the 0.0, .0 is risky. So 1.0, uh, 1.5 is about as high as I like to go. I like to keep it at about 2.0 and let the user provide more or less volume if he or she wishes. So with our target set at negative 2.0 decibels, let's preview the sound. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation Machine. I think that is plenty of volume, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, now that normalization has been applied, the next thing we want to apply is equalization, or sometimes called EQ. If you go to equalization, you see a panel here that is divided into three main parts. Over here on the left are the bass frequencies. In the middle are the midtones. And on the right are the trebles. Now, what equalization does, it basically boosts or reduces selected frequencies in order to get a really natural sounding voice. Now, there are pre defined curves that you can apply. Telephone, walkie-talkie, uh, RIAA recording industry, a bass boost, a bass cut, a treble boost, whatnot. I like the AM radio. 
and let's go ahead and preview AM radio since this is more or less a podcast. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation uh, Machine. Maybe a little bit muffled, but it definitely took out my problem with uh, sibilance. If I wanted to add a little bit of sibilance back in, I could sneak up these uh, treble sliders over here. See what that sounds like. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation better. Machine. Sometimes called simply okay. Citation Definitely Machine. Definitely got to get that shun out. A plosive. Okay, let's go ahead and click OK. Equalization is applied. Now, we're going to highlight it again, and we're going to apply the compressor. Compressor, often called uh, DRC, or Dynamic Range Compressor. And what it does is it reduces loud sounds and it increases soft sounds. Let's go ahead and preview what we've got. This is the default compressor setting. Let's preview what we've got. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation Sounds very Machine. Natural. Sometimes called simply... Okay, let's go ahead and apply it. Now all we need to do is, now that we've compressed it, we're going to bring the uh, gain back up a little bit by renormalizing it to our 2.0. We should see things increase a little bit. Yes, and they did indeed. Okay, we should be finished now except taking out our shun. Let's see what it sounds like. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation machine. There it is. This URL. Okay, let's focus in on that uh, problem. We're going to put our playhead right on top of it, and we're going to come on out until we see it. And there it is right there. If I loop that, you're probably going to hear that, that plosive. Yeah, hear that plosive. And so what I can do, now that I've got that plosive isolated, And you can uh, zoom on in until, I mean, you're just right on top of it. I've got that plosive isolated. And I'm going to simply bring down the gain on it. It might be too much. Let's see. We want to kind of make it equal with the uh, waves around it. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, let's see what it sounds like now. We'll loop a larger portion of it. Take. Mm, still a little breathy, isn't it? Let's see if we can bring it down a little bit more. See what that sounds like. Take. Well, we might just have to live with that. I think we've done as, as well as we can there. This is a brief tutorial on the son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation Machine. Its URL is citationmachine.net. It is the first did, and most did you widely hear that little used bit of citation a breath machine there. on the internet. A little bit of a breath right before that. So let's zoom in. I'll let you hear the breath. It is the first and most widely used citation. Hear the breath. Like that. So we'll isolate the breath and hit silence right there. Now the breath is gone. Let's loop it. Net. It is the. Ah, there you go. The breath is gone. Okay, let's continue playing. It is the first and most widely used citation machine on the internet. Here's how to use it for APA citations. Step one. In the Choose Your Style section, select APA. Okay, excellent. Okay, we've got a good little uh, clip there. We'll go ahead and uh, get rid of that. We don't need it. Cut it off. Zoom out. If this is a little bit too loud for your taste, it is definitely louder than the other sounds around it. Uh, it's no problem whatsoever. Let's see what we got going on there in terms of sound. Step. Step. Okay. 
So uh, let's just reduce the gain on this a little bit. Let's zoom in, make sure we got everything. And we'll reduce the gain. Dup, dup. Okay. Effect, amplify, take down the gain. Let's see what we got. Yeah, see how that looks now more like the others. Let's see if it plays better. Step one. Yeah, definitely plays better. Okay. So those are just some of the things that you can do with Audacity. Now to render it out, you go to File, Export. You want to export it as a wave. I'll bring this up so that you can see it. You want to save it as a WAV file, W-A-V, 16-bit pulse control modulation. And so this is our 30-second clip. Let's save it. And I'm going to put this in my Audacity tutorial folder. And that would be what I would upload for grading. Good luck with yours.